Hello everyone! My name is Manx, and I welcome you guys to the start of a brand new win. Where did the fucking load- Hey, come on, come back here, stupid entrance screen. There we go. Alright, <laughs> I didn't expect it to go back that quickly. So yeah, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is time, it is finally time for the long-awaited, many years requested, uh, Dual Strike Let's Play. Yes, a lot of you guys have wanted to see me play this game for a very long time. Ever since I finished my Advanced Wars 2 and Days of Ruin Let's Play, you guys have been requesting this non-stop. And to be quite honest, the reason why it's taken so long isn't because I didn't want to play it. It's just that I tried like four different emulators and they all really sucked. The quality was terrible and, you know, the cursor went invisible and a lot of shit just prevented me from doing this let's play. Um, and I did get a capture card, but it turns out that the capture card does not work well on DS games. The colors were all weird. And I know I'm colorblind, but no, I did get it confirmed. The colors are very weird. Um, but then I saw, uh, one of uh, Ray's friends. He's, he's called Cal, I think. I don't know if that's his YouTube username, but we call him Cal. And, uh, he actually did a, a, a dual strike let's play and his quality was very good. So I asked him, hey, could you send me your emulator? And he did. And so I got it. So thanks a lot, Cal. I'll, I'll give him a, a shout out in the video description. You can go check out his channel. Click the link in the video description below. I'm not sure how active his channel is. He's done some stuff, I think. Anyway. So yeah, we're going to be playing Dual Strike. And uh, Dual Strike for me falls in the same category as Awakening did in Fire Emblem. In that I like it. It's part of a series that I love. And I played it for many, 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 many hours. It's just that I'm slightly disappointed in it, because I expected more, and Dual Strike did a lot of weird shit that I didn't particularly like, including a very bad story, some retarded mechanics in terms of tag teams and Dual Strikes, which, you know, is the entire gimmick around this game, um, a lot of unbalanced COs, and generally just I don't like the graphics, I don't like the camera, like the way the camera pans downwards, just not very pleasing to the eye, and I, yeah. There's a lot of things I don't like about Dual Strike. There are, of course, a lot of things I do like about Dual Strike, such as the inclusion of skills, the very brutally hard AI, the difficult campaign. Uh, some of the new units are really cool. So yeah, Dual Strike does have its redeeming uh, qualities. I do play Dual Strike against one of my friends uh, on a regular basis, and I have come to enjoy it quite a lot, though we just have a house rule that we never use tag teams, and when you don't use tag teams, Dual Strike actually becomes pretty fun. Anyway, we're gonna be playing uh, the hard campaign, Cal was nice enough to leave me a save state with the hard campaign unlocked, and I'm gonna be challenging myself a lot, because I'm gonna be not only gonna be playing the hard campaign, I'm gonna be playing the hard campaign not using Dual Strikes or tag teams, and not using skills. That is what we're gonna do, and that's pretty hard, because the campaign is already pretty challenging. I dare say the hard campaign of Dual Strike is a lot harder than Advanced Wars 2 hard campaign. It's not quite up there uh, with uh, Advanced Wars 1 hard campaign, but it's pretty darn close, actually, if you deprive yourselves of tag teams and skills. It actually becomes pretty fucking brutal. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is time to jump into the story, which is not very good. <laughs> actually, it's... It's garbage. It, it's fucking garbage. Anyway. Several months have passed since the war in Macroland. Thanks to Andy Nell and the other CEOs, the Black Hole Army was defeated. The people there can finally live in peace! He does have some nice soundtrack, though. And I do love Eagle on his little bike there on that last picture. But in the far-off continent of Omegalan, trouble was brewing! It is from here the Black Hole launched a massive invasion. The enemy army has replenished its might with remarkable speed under the command of a new leader. Ah, yes. The antagonist of this game is terrible. The last great war left many questions unanswered. What exactly? And so, Orange Star, Blue Moon, Green Earth, and Yellow Comet have joined forces to create the Allied Nations. Determined to free their homeland, they launch a counterattack. Well, I guess the question is basically like, where the fuck does Black Hole even come from? Because that is never answered. And it isn't answered in this game either. So, yeah. You don't, you don't get to know where they come from. Seriously, they should... They, like, we have three games and we, are, we never get explained where Black Hole comes from. That, that seriously pisses me off. I mean, they should have really wrapped it up in this one. Like, tell us where they come from, what the fuck they want. Because, really, all they do is just invade. And, and they don't really give us a clear motive, other than the fact that they like world domination. So yeah, anyway. 
Here is Nell. Rachel, I want you to be careful. This looks like it could be a tough battle. No, I'm not doing the Swedish Nell voice. I actually hate that voice. And here's Rachel. She's sort of like the main character in this game. Don't worry about me, sis. You got your hands full cover in Macrolan or something. I butched that line. We may not have a big presence here in Omegaland, but we're not alone. With all four allied nations working together, Black Hole's no match for us. I'm glad to hear that. Still, I've sent a few of our CEOs over to give you a hand. Just hang in there until they can arrive and don't do anything rash, okay? I've got it, sis. My Omegaland CEOs can take anything Black Hole dishes out. Ha! I know. And with you in the field, I got nothing to worry about. Don't, I don't think I'll be able to join you, though. No, you're way too overpowered for this part of the game, no? That means you're in charge of field training any new CLs, all right? Yeah, any one new. Got it. Good. That's all, soldier. And by the way, don't call me sis. Not with the other CLs might hear. Oh, yeah, that might get them wondering about your age. Hey, that's not what I'm saying at all. I never understood if this was like a nod at Nell being old or Nell being young. Because Rachel doesn't seem very old at all. She seems like she's like, I don't know, 19? Whereas Nell is more like, I don't know, 20, 27, 29? So I'm not really sure what, what, the, what the deal with that line is. Is she implying that Nell is like too old to be her sister? Or that because she's Rachel's sister, she's much younger than people think? I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Hey, that's not what I'm saying at all. I have my orders, Commander Nell. I'll take care of everything. Rachel signing out. Click. Uh, yeah, here is basically Andy if he wasn't stupid and a hipster. I don't know. I don't really. I'm not sure if calling Jake a hipster is the correct. Like he's he's kind of like a hip hop style going on. Yeah, he's he's Andy without the re the retard. And to be quite honest, I actually really miss Sandy. As, as, as retarded as Andy was in both of the games, his retardedness kind of added a little bit of charm to the story. And I feel like Jake, he just doesn't really fill the same role as Andy did. He's way too, like, relatable. He's like, oh, I'm like the cool relatable teen that all the young people should like because I talk like this, yo, black hole, yo, dog. Like, yeah. So, Commander Nell is your sister. Yep, we both enlisted about the same time, but my big I mean, Commander Nell, smarter than me, so she rose through the ranks fast. Luck had something to do with it, too. Nah, you're razor sharp, Rachel. I guess I haven't been much of, much of anywhere, but I haven't met anyone smarter. Ha! Take one step out of a Megaland, and you'll be tripping over steels with way more skill than me. I don't know, Rachel, you're pretty fucking overpowered. But listen, Jake, Omegaland is in very real danger, and we can't count on getting a backup from Macroland anytime soon. We can't even be sure where all of our allied CEOs are now, either. You and me are the only ones left to stop the enemy, Jake. Wow, two teens. Two teenagers, that's all we could muster. Omegaland is screwed. Sounds like our backs are up against the wall. All in all, you're taking this pretty well. You're not worried. Nah, well, yeah, maybe a little. But with you rolling besides me, I know it's all good. Don't even think I'm doing all the work. You're gonna have to pull your weight. It's time to start training. I'm warning you, though. I'm not going easy on you. What? Oh, let me turn my music down. Yeah, cool, I'm listening. So yeah, we're getting attacked, but in all of this, we still have time to fight each other. These training sessions never made much sense to me. Are, are they like... Are they like pretending to be fighting? Or are they actually legitimately killing each other when they're doing these sort of training sessions? I don't know. I like to think that they're not, that they're, that these are just war games, so they're like they're like not shooting with the real ammunition, but how does that work with tanks and shit? That's that's what I want to know. Anyway, I'm, ask, I'm asking questions again. So yeah, this map, this, this map gives a lot of players headaches, and the reason why is it's actually pretty hard. Uh, for a first map on hard campaign, this is actually a tricky ma map. Most of the missions that comes after this, they're actually really easy. But this one's hard. And the reason why this mission is so hard is because you face Rachel. Rachel is ridiculously overpowered. She is so fucking good. I'm going to talk a little bit about her. I'm going to talk about all the CEOs that we'll be meeting and all the CEOs that I'll be playing as. So, Rachel, her day-to-day -day power is really weak. She only gets one extra repair. So that's it. So, she sounds pretty weak, right? She also has a pretty garbage little power. It's it's a copy of Nell's little power. It gives her a little bit of extra luck. However, Rachel's bread and butter and what makes her so ridiculously good is her superpower, Covering Fire, which fires three missiles. Three fucking missiles. That's that's a combined area of effect damage of nine. It is more powerful than Sturm's Meteor Strike from Advanced Wars 2. Well, Sturm's Meteor Strike did give him a ridiculous attack and defense boost, but still. The fact that it only costs six stars is ridiculous. This is a really strong superpower, and it makes Rachel one of the best CEOs in the game. Um, 
Now, the missiles do have a little bit of an AI going on to them. Uh, I do believe one of the missiles targets infantry. The other missile targets, like, the biggest clump of units. And the third missile tries to be, like, as cost-effective as it can in terms of how much damage it deals. At least that's what I think. Uh, that's how I think it works. So, yeah. Um... We are, of course, not going to be playing with dual COs. We're going to be playing with solo COs. We don't have all of the COs unlocked, but we can unlock them as we go. I'm going to be playing as Sasha. Expect to see Sasha a lot during this campaign. Sasha is probably one of the best COs in the campaign mode. Why? Because of her little power, Market Crash. Sasha can basically use her little power to remove power stars from the enemy. This is, according to the Advanced Force Wiki, 5,000 funds removes 10% of the to CO, uh, enemy CO's uh, meter. Not sure if this is true, the Wiki is a little bit shaky. But what's so good about this is that, one, she can completely shut down enemy dual strikes, which, you know, they're, they're basically a majority of the reason why some of the maps are so hard. But for this mission in particular, Sasha can completely shut down Rachel's covering fire. If Rachel loses her superpower, she loses a lot of her punch, which is why Sasha's amazing on this map. Sasha's not a bad CO otherwise. Her Warbond superpower basically converts 50% of the damage she does to cash. So, say she kills a unit worth 10,000 money, she gains uh, 5,000. Yeah. yeah, so if she kills, for example, a fighter with her superpower active, which is worth 20,000, she gains 10,000, which is decent, but no. With Sasha, you just want to spam Market Crash. And her day-to-day -day power just gives her a 10% increased income. So she gets a little bit more money, which synergizes well with her power. I like Sasha a lot. She's a cool CO. Uh, in Versus mode, she's pretty weak. But um, in Campaign mode, she's godlike. And you'll probably be seeing more Sasha than any other CO in the game. So yeah, this map is tricky. It has a lot of medium tanks coming your way, and it doesn't look very threatening at first glance, but Rachel will quickly start to produce a lot of units, and it can get pretty nasty pretty quickly. Now, using uh, using uh, Sasha's power is a bit of a balancing act, because you have to make sure you use it at the end of your turn, because if you use it at the start of your turn, you're not really going to be able to... Uh, well, you're going to give Rachel a lot more power, because you'll use it, and then you'll kill units, which will grant her power. Mission 1, Jake's Trial. But, you also have to use it before you buy units, because, of course, the more cash you have, the more the better it is. So you gotta be really... You gotta you gotta think a little bit when you use Sasha. You, you can't just spam her power and, and play mindlessly. It's not gonna work out for you. Anyway, so... Um, I am going to start off by killing this tank right here. Um, now, there are two ways you can do this. You can attack with this tank first, or you can attack with this mech first. In my opinion, this this mech gets killed off by this recon anyway. So, I actually like to just go for the tank first, and then have my tank be at full health. It's more useful that way, at least to me. Now, you want to capture the city. That's really important. However, you also want to block this medium tank from interrupting your cap. So, what I like to do, since you, you, can't, you can't take the city, don't try. So I like to take it with this mech and then place the other mech in front of this mech so I get this city on turn two. And then I simply just capture these buildings right away. Then I build an infantry and send my my recon out. Now this recon will kill my mech, sadly. There's not nothing I can do about that, but I consider it a small sacrifice. Um, bam, ba, ba, bam. So now we will proceed to shut down this recon. Uh, I'm actually going to back off with this mech right here. And then we need to make sure we get this base on the next turn. And I'm going to be building a tank. And of course, we gotta we got to capture this building as well. I need to build an artillery here at some point to, uh, to start shooting down these medium tanks. But for the most part, killing the medium tanks isn't actually super important. You just got to keep them bottlenecked up. Ugh, I spilled some Pepsi Max on my sweater. Whoops. My bad. Anyway. So, it might be tempting to go in and interrupt these caps, but more than anything, you want to make sh uh, make absolutely sure that you don't... Like, that you don't get first strike. So, it's more important to get this base, and it's also really important to get this mech into action, as well as with this tank. So, what I'm going to do, actually... I am tempted to attack here, but I'm not going to do that. Um... I'm actually going to combine these two, because we need to keep this uh, this point choked. And then I'm going to build a artillery. And then I'm going to see if I can't bait out this tank. Uh, what I can do, I suppose, is I can place this tank on the city, which will cause this tank to attack me. Although, that's not fantastic. I think I'll actually just wait. 
Um, trying to interrupt Rachel's caps isn't gonna work out for you anyway, so don't try. Uh, but So, we got enough uh, money for our power now, but we don't want to use it yet, because Rachel doesn't really have that much uh, power stored up. We might use it at the end of the turn, possibly. Uh, we shall have to see, but for now, we'll stay put. We want to get this artillery into play. That's important. And we want to get this mech into play as well. In fact, I think the time may be right to move in with the tank. Um... We could try to interrupt this cap. It would certainly be nice. I'm gonna try go. I'm gonna try to go for it. I'm gonna place this tank on the city right here, and then we're gonna move in with the mech as well. Now we gotta be careful about this anti-air. We don't want the anti-air to attack the mech. That would be bad. And it is tempting to use the little power right now just to remove her stars completely. So I think I'll do that. I'll, I'll use my Market Crash. It should remove all three of her stars. At least, yeah, half of her stars at the very least. You just wanna... If you play this, if you play this correctly, then you will be able to get through this mission without Rachel ever using her superpower. This was a nice engagement for me. I only took some hit damage off my uh, recon, which is quite nice. Um, I'm gonna move my APC back. I think I'm gonna move it on here, and then I'm gonna build another infantry. Now, I'm gonna start to do some damage to the tank. This was actually a little bit of a mistake. Uh, we need to kill this anti-air now. Luckily, I have a mech here, which can help out. I have to constantly watch Rachel's power meter. Very, very important to continuously watch her power meter. We don't, we really, really do not want her to get, uh, get her superpower. But we dealt some nice damage to her tank. We're gonna interrupt this cap as well. And uh, we also need to get some new tanks, so I'm gonna build a new tank right here. And I want to keep this recon alive if possible. So I think if I keep if I, if it I think I'm gonna have to shield it over here. I do want to keep it alive. So there it should be no problem for us to get our power next turn. Rachel sometimes uses her superpower at the end of her turn. So, but hopefully she's not gonna be able to do enough to get a full power meter. No, definitely not. This is going really well. We have 23,000 or 22,000 cash, which should be plenty enough to stop her. In fact, I'm actually going to attack here, just to be cheeky. And then we're going to go for this artillery right here. And now we have our power, which is good. We're going to shut down this mech. And this is actually going really well. This map is, is deceptively hard if you don't play it properly, but I seem to have gotten off to a pretty good start here. Um, now we could interrupt this camp. No, we can't. Five, five, five uh, left. That's not gonna work. We could kill this medium tank, but I honestly don't want to. I think it's probably better to move down here. Even though our mechs are pretty damaged, they can still, still do something, right? And before, it's very important. It's so easy to start building units right now, but you gotta remember: don't build units. Use your power first and then build units, because the more money you have, the more market crash is gonna do. So we just removed three stars right now. I'm gonna build another tank, and then another infantry. So let's see if we can, um... Again, I've never, I've never seen Rachel use her little power, ever. She, it just does not happen. So this is good. Uh, we can actually block one of our bases now. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to do, but we can do it. Sacrificing a 9 hit point tank to block a base is a big investment, but it might just be worth it. Now, I want to be careful about what I attack right here, because I want to make sure uh, I don't waste power, so to say. I want to be very careful. She has one and a half star left to go. I think uh, I want to block this base. I really do, and I think I will. Blocking, like, that basically cuts her... It really cuts down on her uh, production. So yeah, I think I want to kill this tank as well. She has... Yeah, she's still one, a half, one and a half stars to go. I think I want to use this infantry to attack this mech. This mech won't be able to do much more. And we can attack this guy. Let's take a look. Yeah, she has one star left to go. We probably want to... I really want to kill this mech right here. But if I, if I don't move away from this mech, I'm going to suffer, so... 
we don't want this mech to be able to attack us. There we go. Let's take a look at our power meter. Half a star left to go. We probably don't want to attack her anymore. We can use this APC right here as baits. Place our infantry right here and... I need a good power on my next turn, so I'm not going to build anything but infantry from here on out. That medium tank might take down my mech. I'm actually not sure. We shall have to see. Oh, oh, oh. Will she get her power? Ah, oh, fuck, she got her power. But she didn't use it. Awesome, she did not use it. All right. So, sometimes you will see Rachel use her power. It can definitely happen at the end of the turn, but this time she actually didn't use it, and I'm... Not sure why, this would have been a pretty good opportunity for her to use it. Definitely would, so that's kind of strange. Anyway, if we can replace this tank right here with something else, that would be nice, but honestly, we can't do that right now. But now, you definitely want to block her bases. That's how you win this mission. Uh, essentially, now she can't reinforce anymore. And I also need to do enough damage to actually block her power. And now I got enough damage to block her power, so that's great. I think I'm actually going to attack... Uh, no, definitely not. We need to we need to kill this mech. We need to kill this mech if we wanna. We need to, uh, or we could kill this infantry. That also works. Then we can do this. So that is dead right now. And we wanna lose as few units as possible to get the best score naturally. Okay, so again, I almost built something again. But there we go, 33,000, and we reduce how many stars by that? We take away, yeah, basically literally all of her stars. This is why Sasha is just a fucking beast. She is just a fucking beast. And now, uh, Rachel basically has zero bases left, so we should be able to mop her up on this turn. And we will. Now, in Dual Strike, I actually don't exactly know how the rankings work. I know that in Days of Ruin, building units actually depletes your score, but I don't think it, that's the case in Dual Strike. I think you actually want to build units, so I'm going to be building units with all my monies. I'm going to be building tanks. Actually, anti-air are more expensive. I should have built anti-air, but it's fine. So that is... Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Oh, no. You gotta be fucking... No! What? No! Oh, man! <laughs> I'm a fucking retard! No! Oh, what? You built the medium tank now? No! What? Are you fucking kidding me now? No! 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 Fuck me! Are you fucking serious right now? <laughs> oh my god, are you serious right now? One hit point left on the APC! One hit point left on the APC! What? No! No! Stop it! Fucking hell! Oh, this is fucking embarrassing right now. Oh my god, this is so embarrassing right now. I had this mission. I had this fucking mission beat. No. No, 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 no. That was the... That was the perfect mission, guys. The perfect mission. Ah, oh, what? If I don't get... Oh, I'm not gonna get my ass rank now. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Holy fucking shit. I was- I- I was sure I was going to kill it. I was sure I was going to kill it, and then it had one hit point left. And now she gets her superpower! No! No! Ah! Well, at least we get to see her superpower. Oh, look how fucking good this thing is. I- it just com- it completely shuts you down. It completely- you see how fucking quickly this mission goes to hell. I can't fucking believe it. I fucking can't believe it. And now she has her fucking... Ah! Oh, are you serious right now? And now suddenly I'm a fucking... Ah! Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me! No! No! This is... Ah! Alright, fuck this map. 
Fuck this map. Fuck this map. Seriously, fuck it. Oh my god, that is so fucking annoying. You guys have no fucking idea how fucking annoying this is. Oh my god, no. Well, we're gonna combine these two. We're gonna combine these two. My god. One little mistake, and it cost me like a billion turns. Can't fucking believe this shit. Well, eventually, tanks are able to kill a medium tank. It's not bad, but still. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so silly. Well, at least we may get to use the superpower. But yeah, our score is gonna be garbage. I think I think I literally would have gotten an S rank. I'm pretty sure I would have gotten a fucking S rank if had I had I killed this shit. But yeah, this this map is deceptively difficult. One little fuck up and Rachel just spirals out of control because she has so much. I don't really know what it is really. Anyway, all right, 15 days, fine. Let's use fucking let's use Sasha's superpower just for lols. War bombs. So yeah, it's a. I'm actually not sure. I think it's the amount of damage you do because now we have twenty nine thousand four hundred. And oh crap, we didn't even kill it. Lovely. Never mind. Best part ever. There we go. So what did we get? Are you are you fucking kidding me? We still got an S rank. Yeah, dual strike is really nice when it comes to its ranks. I, I that was not an S rank. Seriously. So yeah, if you don't if you don't use skills, or at least I think no, skills doesn't matter, but if you only use a single CEO, you actually get twice the experience. So Heart Campaign is actually one of the best ways to level up your uh, COs. Bravo! Unless you don't know, when a CO reaches different ranks, they get access to uh, more skills. I think you need to be rank 10 in order to unlock the last skills, but I'm not sure. I think rank 10 actually gives you the alternate outfit for the CO. On my uh, DS Dual Strike, or on my actual Dual Strike cartridge, I actually have every single CO with their alternate outfits. I might do a video showcasing that if, if people want to see. So yeah, uh, that was... Um that was the first mission, and really fucking annoying that that IPC did not die, but I still got an S rank, so I suppose it's fine. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this first part of my Dual Strike Let's Play! Uh, let me know what you think. Comments are always really appreciated. Uh, let's bump this Dual Strike Let's Play up to the front page of YouTube, because that, in order for that to happen, it needs a lot of comments and a lot of likes, so please get to liking, please get to commenting, and uh, yeah, tell me what your favorite CO and Dual Strike is. And uh, what you're looking forward to with this Let's Play. If there's any particular COs you want to see me play, give me a shout out. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Love you all. Fucking hell. Oh, that APC.